What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2017 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Van 2500. Today on the Mercedes behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your fuel filter. Obviously, this is a diesel vehicle. This one's the six cylinder, the three liter. And one of the most important things to know whenever considering replacing the fuel filter, which is going to be recommended at every oil change interval, is which one your vehicle is equipped with. These Sprinter vans came with three possible options, which you can see in front of us, all three of which are available on FCPO.com. And per Mercedes, the first thing you want to do before buying one is figuring out which one your vehicle is equipped with. In order to do that, you're going to want to open up the hood, look underneath the air box, and you can see just the top of the fuel filter nice and clearly. And I'll be able to tell you which one you have. As you can see, there are three different ones available, two of which have a built-in sensor and one which does not. Ours has the built-in sensor with the additional hookup for the line, which is what we're going to be installing today. But overall, the same general process is going to apply to all three of these. Along with that, we also recommend you get new clamps for your fuel lines. They are two different sizes and both of which are linked in the description below. If you don't want to go with these Mercedes style OE clamps, you can always switch to an Oedeker style clamp, which is still pretty similar. Um, but there are some special pliers to go with that, which we will talk about in just a moment. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job, my good people, some of the specialty tools you're going to need are an E10. We have a five mil hex. And these are CTA 4029 pliers. These are designed for those special Mercedes-Benz uh, clamps. They are technically reusable, but to be totally honest, they're very inexpensive. They're, you're better off just replacing them so you can avoid a fuel leak. With that, we have a six inch extension. We have a three inch drive ratchet as well as an electric ratchet. Then I have a couple different picks and a flathead screwdriver that should help with some of the clamps and getting the hoses on and off of the fuel filters. With that, keep some shop towels handy, wear some safety goggles, some gloves if you don't want fuel on your hands. Let's get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are under the hood of the Sprinter. Now, one thing you could do, again, if you're just curious on how to determine what filter your uh, vehicle is equipped with, just by taking a peek, come in a little bit closer. And we can see the top of our fuel filter right here where my fingers are poking through. And you'll see the two fuel lines running to it. You'll see ours is equipped with the sensor and it also has the external line attachment. So pretty easy to see um, on these six cylinders. It takes two seconds and then you can determine what you need to order online. With that, my good people, we're gonna continue by removing our air box. In order to do that, we have a couple electrical connectors to undo. We have a small tab on either side of our mass airflow sensor. To remove that, you just pinch and pull back. For the secondary sensor, there's just one release tab on the back. Same thing, push it in, pull back. And then following the harness, there's a small alligator clip that holds it up on the bottom portion of the air box. You can just pull it down. You can pry it off using a small flat head depending on how long yours has been on there. And we can just free it up and set it to the side. Up top here, we have a hose clamp that we're gonna wanna undo next. And then moving over onto the driver's side of things, we have a jump post. This is for like uh, jump starting someone or the vehicle. Uh, there's a release tab on the bottom. You can't see it, but you can feel it. You're gonna to wanna to push in towards the air box once you do, just a little bit, and then this will pop up freely and you can just tuck it up out of the way. Once we have all those items disconnected, we can grab the air box by these two front legs up here. They're just going into rubber grommets down here by the radiator support. We're just gonna lift up. This pipe can come with it. Pull the intake pipe off and we just pull it forward. There's two little uh, plastic pegs or forks, call them what you'd like, on the back of the air box, and these key into the rubber grommets on the firewall, and that's what's gonna be uh, needed to align the air box when we reinstall everything later. At this point, we have the air box off. We have a great view of the fuel filter, but we still need to remove the rest of this intake tube going to the turbo to give us some more room when it comes time to lift it up. So with that, we'll take our flathead screwdriver and work on this inside clamp. And then we're just gonna reach down here, get this clamp undone. This is a great time to also just inspect uh, what the turbo looks like. We can feel for shaft play. We can get a good reach in there and just kind of get our bearings. We're at about 87,000 miles on this rig. Should be loose enough. Give us a good wiggle. Pull it back. And then on the flip side, we do have an electrical connector 
and another breather line going to it. This electrical connector, it's a little bit hard to see, but it does have a gray release tab. You're gonna wanna pull back first. This is pretty standard Mercedes stuff. If it's a little bit tight, just use a little flat head to unlock it, which is the case here, just like that. And then we can disconnect it. And then for this one, we're just gonna twist it and just give it a couple turns, just like so. And we can set this over to the side. Now with our intake tube out of the way, we have a better view of the top of the fuel filter. You'll see that we have a quick uh, disconnect style clip here that holds this top line to our sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that clip out using a small pick tool. Just be mindful, you need to hang on to that. You don't want to lose it. So be very careful when you pull it off. If you need to, you can have a magnet tool handy. We're just gonna kinda reach underneath it, get it started. This one, uh, it's a little bit ugly, but it's out. And with that, we can give this line a little wiggle. Just gotta break the seal at the little O-ring, and then we can pull that off. It's normal to have some diesel leak out of there, so just have a couple shop towels handy. I'm just gonna work that off like that. And we can just go ahead, kinda tuck that to the side for now. And put this towel there so it doesn't drip all over everything. All right, I'm just tucking it over there. On our laundry list of things to do is we have an electrical connector here. Uh, there's really not too much room to disconnect it, so we might have to deal with that one uh, as we come up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on freeing up the two fuel lines. You can see the clamps on there. Uh, for this one, we're gonna use the bigger pick tool that we have, and we're just gonna use that to try to break the clamps free. I'm just gonna stick this in there. There's one. And same thing over here, there's two. Then with that, we can start working those lines back. These are two different sizes, so it's not likely for you to mix them up, and they're probably gonna stay in their natural position on where they go, so not too, too much to worry about there. Just gotta break the seal. So this fuel line, I just went ahead and pulled it from back here. Here's our smaller clamp, so this is gonna take the smaller of the two. I'm just gonna let that hang out there for now. Now we can work our next line off. I'm just using this pick tool to kind of help break the seal on this hose. Once we break it, then it'll come right off. Okie dokie. Now with that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna release the clip, uh, at least for the first time while it's still mounted in the car. So I'm not fighting the filter. So I'm just gonna press up to release the tab and use a small flathead to just kind of break the seal here and pry the connector back a little bit. I'm not worried about hurting the uh, filter since we're gonna be replacing it, but at least to get it started. Okay, that should be fine. Now we have two E10 screws that we're gonna wanna remove. These help hold down the filter in place. So we'll get our extension on our electric ratchet and just zap both of those out. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is just fold back these little metal tabs. They're just on little rubber like hinges, just to get them out of our way. We have one more underneath this electrical connector. Same deal, gray little locking tab. Pull it back. I'm just gonna free it open with the flat head. It can spend a little while since this has been done. Just to unlock it. Push the tab to disconnect. And our third E10 is hidden right there, right next to our sensor. All right, and now with the three E10s removed that hold down our fuel filter, we should be able to lift it up. Now we can work the rest of this electrical connector off. And here we go, my good people. Here's our old fuel filter. You'll notice this bracket that sits around the outside of it. We're gonna go ahead and swap that over to our new fuel filter, it uses a hex. So we'll just head over to the workbench, and we'll get these swapped over, and then we'll get the new one in. All right, my good people, for this bracket, we have a five millimeter hex that holds the bracket to the side of the fuel filter. So what I like to do is I just like to line these up side by side. I make a mark on my bracket, and then I make a mark on my filter so I can line them up. It's easy for me to see that this tab 
sits pretty much in line with the left inlet. So that's going to be my reference point to clock this the same way it came out. I'll do a similar mark over here on the new one. An alternative thing you can do is simply put the bracket on nice and loose, walk over to the truck, put it back in the truck, clock the filter again, and then take it out and tighten it. However, sometimes that can allow for, there's room for error both ways. This is just the way I like to do it. Take a six mil hex, crack that free, slide this off. We're gonna keep them side by side. That looks pretty perfect. We'll go ahead and snug down the five mil once more. And then if we need to adjust it, it's not a huge deal. We can always take this back out and adjust it. But with that, our fuel filter is ready to install. We'll take these little plastic safety grommets off. And now let's head over to the truck. All right, back at the truck, my good people, we're gonna swap out this clamp on this hose while we have it available to us. Nice and free, we're just gonna slide that old one off and get the new one in place. So we have our new clamp, we're gonna go ahead and feed that on. Just kind of let that hang out there. I'm doing that one first just because that one's the tighter hose of the two to get to. Now with that, we can bring our fuel filter over, drop that into place, check our alignment on our bracket. Everything looks good there. looks like it's gonna line up perfectly. So we're gonna raise this up a little bit and we're gonna plug in our electrical connector now. And that's gonna allow us to just get this situated while we have the room. There we go. And might as well pop this hose on here while it's hanging out. If it wants to go, if not, no problem. All right. With that in place, we're gonna take our three E10 bolts and just get those started by hand. And while you're there, so we don't forget, we can go ahead and swing this electrical connector back over, plug that baby in, and then push in the gray tap to lock it. All right, with that, before we do this top fuel line, we're gonna do, we're gonna do our two main fuel lines and get those situated. We'll start with the right one first. This is a shorter one of the two. That comes from the hard line right up top of here. So mind, don't mind my fingers for a minute while I just kinda get in the way of your view and get this one started. With that pop done, we can drag our clamp back over the front here and try to position it how we want it. All right, now we're gonna take our clamps or our pliers and we're gonna go ahead and get our clamp situated. There we go. That one's nice and secure. Don't forget that the flat side goes on the big head of the clamp, if you will, and then the notch side goes on this little humped area. So it should look something like this when you're going to join them together. And then it brings the top of the clamp over and then they cinch down on themselves. So with that, we're gonna take this old clamp off. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna route the, uh, route the fuel line back over. Get that over here. Then with that situated, we can go ahead and put our clamp over it. Now we can feed said hose onto the fuel filter. All right, then with the fuel hose situated, we're gonna get our clamp in position. Same deal, bring it over, grab our pliers, and snug it shut. The nice thing about this is if you're worried about any fuel leaks, the top of the filter and these clamps are still very visible, even with the air box back in place. So it's never a bad idea to go back and just double check your work once you have everything up and running. There we go, my good people. Both of those are on. We'll give them a little tug, make sure they're not gonna go anywhere. Clamps are situated nicely. That's what we wanna see. Now we have this last top uh, line that goes up here. Remember that one has the funky metal clip, which in our case has been a little uh, dismantled. We're gonna go ahead and just gonna get it started. And we're gonna bring it down, line that up. And then we're gonna use pliers here just to kind of pull it through on the bottom. Just using a flathead to pop the clip through. And now with that, 
our fuel lines are all fully attached. Everything's hooked back up. Now we can feed our intake elbow back in. So let's do that now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install our elbow. Don't forget you have this line here first. So we're gonna just plug back in. It's just, just a press fit. Then we can go ahead and we'll feed this kind of how it's gonna go. Plug our electrical connector back in. Make sure the little gray tab's released if it accidentally shut or got closed down and then lock it in. And we can rotate this as needed. We can feed this back over our turbo. You'll see there's a tiny little notch on the rubber right underneath the uh, clamp. That notch lines up with this little notch coming off of the tag of the turbo. So that'll indicate that this uh, hose is in the correct spot. I'm just gonna reach from behind to kind of keep the clamp in the spot that I can work with. And then just tighten that back up. With that nice and snug, now we can grab our air box and feed that back in. Now we're gonna go ahead and line up the two back plastic forks coming off the back of the air box with the two rubber bushings coming off of our firewall. That'll help us make sure that everything's nice and lined up. Once we have that into place, we can pop these two rubber uh, arms back into the rubber grommets. Give everything a shake, that feels good. Make sure that this feed pipe goes back into its ducting over here. You can bring over the uh, positive post for jumping. Just clip that in. Over on this side, we'll get our clamp back on, which fell off earlier. Get that placed like that. We can go ahead and tighten that now with our flathead screwdriver. And now we can swing over our harness with our two connectors. We'll stick the alligator clip back up. It's a little home there. We can plug in both sensors. All right, my good people. And with all these things hooked back up, that is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a really easy and straightforward job on the six cylinder sprinters. Something that is highly necessary and we would argue you should do with every oil change. Even if you're doing an early 5,000 mile interval like we are, uh, it's just a super critical part of any diesel vehicle to be totally honest. But with that, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comments section below. If there's a specific job you wanna see us do on the three liter or the Sprinter chassis in general, leave that down there as well. And if you like this video and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.